shop and I thought we would do a fun jelly roll pillow today because I'm hoping that you all have a jelly roll sitting in your stash that you can use. This is a quick, fun tutorial. I'm actually gonna time it and at the end I can tell you exactly how long it takes. This tutorial is inspired by Jara Brandeviggs from A Quilting in the Rain's Strippy Pillow Tutorial. We have her permission to do this video, so um, click her blog in the very first link so you can see what she did. We're just making her pillow slightly different and quite a bit bigger. So to start, you'll need just one jelly roll, about one and a half yards for the backing if you wanna do an envelope, and you need about three quarters of a yard of just a plain white and a scrap of batting that's at least 25 inches square. This is super easy. I'm gonna show you from start to finish. So let's get started. So our sample pillow was made with Apricot and Ash by Corey Yoder from Moda. And today I'm gonna make the sample with the At Home Collection by Bonnie and Camille. You need 28 strips of two and a half inches so the first thing I'm going to do is just kind of lay out, lay them out, pick the ones I want, take any duplicates out, and you need about 28. I mean, you might need one or two more or one or two less, depending on how you space them apart. But I'm kind of just going to lay out, uh, pick what I want, and then go from there. This collection doesn't have too many duplicates, so it won't be too hard. And if you keep it in order of the jelly roll, it's gonna look really nice because it's already in color order. So this is about 24. So I have to decide here, do I wanna go white, green, or gray? So I think I'm gonna do four more whites. I think we'll do, I think we'll do that and just kind of leave these left over. Um, you can save these for another project or you can make a small pillow. So you can make this pillow any size. So if you look at Jara's blog, you can look at the size she did. We're doing ours today, 24 inches. So now what we're gonna do is, you only need these about 25 inches wide. So I'm gonna kind of lay them out Let's see, I'm gonna stack them up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Stack them up maybe in stacks of 10, and I'm gonna chop them off. So you need 25 inches, so I'm gonna just kinda chop it here. Now you can use this leftover for another project. These would be great to make log cabin blocks with our six inch or 12 inch paper. You want to make sure you chop it off on the end that's not the fold. Um, you could do it a lot nicer. I'm just kind of um, just saving time. I'm going to keep them in the order they're in. So all of this is not wasted, you just put it into another project. And then what we're gonna do now is we're gonna put them, keep them in order, and you're gonna fold them with wrong sides together, kind of like you would do binding. Wrong sides together and just press them. And you're gonna do this for all 28 and keep them in order. And I'll be back when that is done.
Okay, so I'm putting a couple of pins just around the edge to keep everything in place a little bit. You just have to be careful you don't poke yourself. And I have pinned down my Jelly Roll strip with just three pins. You don't need to do it, but it will make it a little bit quicker. And so I'm just gonna pop it on the sewing machine and I'm just gonna stitch about a quarter inch away. And then you can see that your little jelly roll is gonna flip. And then what you can do is decide how far apart you want everything to be. And what we decided is we're gonna do about an inch from the previous seam. Um, so not an inch from the edge of the jelly roll, which would be here, but an inch from the previous seam. So it's about three quarters of an inch from your previous jelly roll. So I'm just gonna, so if you want, you could just measure two inches from the edge of your other. And the main thing here, the seam doesn't even have to be perfect. You just kind of want your ruffles to kind of be about the same. So you could measure about two inches from the other one, or you could do it however you want. You could just see, you know, you could do a really tight one like this. You know, as long as it covers that seam, you should be fine. So I'll put a couple of pins in here. You really don't have to pin if you don't want to. But you know, you could make your um, pillow just have a ton of ruffles if you want it. You can just totally have fun with it. And so it's kind of like a quilt as you go jelly roll table runner. So I'm just gonna keep stitching. And you could stitch, you know, I'm stitching from this side because I want all this bulk over here. Normally you would stitch from this side, but I don't want all this stuff over here. So I'm gonna kinda stitch wherever is easiest. And you can make your stitch length a little bit longer if you want. I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm just going to build this. So from here, I can just take two inches from the edge of this fold. Just make sure your fold is the side that flips out so you don't have strips just going everywhere. So your fold goes on the inside. And so I'm just going to keep adding until I have about uh, 24 inches done and then I'll stop and I might have a few more strips um, to add or I might have too many strips. We'll just kind of see um, how it works out today. So, and I'm gonna time myself so you'll know how long this took.
So I have 24 strips, and now what I'm gonna do is cut this down into a square. My pillow is 24 inches square, so I'm gonna cut my pillow down to about 22 or 23 inches. That way, it's really puffy when that pillow gets in there. I can fill up all the space. So I'm going to turn, and on my mat where my um, white fabric was over here, that's gonna be the line that I start with. And I'm gonna just measure that. And I'm just gonna trim at the very top of the last jelly roll. And that looks to be 22 and a quarter inches. So I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna cut the rest of this 22 and a half. And I'm just gonna cut from the back because it's easier to see. So I'm gonna just use the line on the bottom of my ruler and cut. And of course it's a pillow, it doesn't have to be perfect. Nobody's gonna know if it's not perfect. It's not like a quilt. And then I'm gonna go to 22 and a half inches or 22 and a quarter inches and cut there. So I do have some waste. That's super cute. I don't know what we could do with it, but it is cute anyway. And so that is my, my pillow top. And so for the back, I'm gonna cut two pieces of fabric about 23 inches wide. And then I'll show you how I do my envelope back. Now I'm really bad at doing the envelope back math. So I kind of just, um, I kind of cut just whatever the width is and then back into it. So I'm gonna cut about 24 inches, that way I have a little bit extra. And then I'll save this for another project. And then what I'm gonna do is about 11 inches would be the center of your pillow. So you've got your fold in the center. And what I wanna do is create two folds that overlap. So I'm gonna just put them on the mat randomly and I'm gonna go about six inches over. So I've got my fold at the 20 inches I'm gonna to go to the 14 inches and lay my other piece right there. And that's gonna create this overlap. Make sure your folds are in the center. And then three inches in the center of that is 17 inches. And I'm gonna put the center of my pillow there. And that's kind of how I do an envelope. And then you're gonna cut all the rest off and there's waste and that's okay, but that's, that's the easiest way for me to do it is to just put your two envelope pieces in half on your mat, overlap them however you, much you want and then put the center in there. And it doesn't have to be exact. So, and what I'm gonna do today is I'm not gonna put binding on. I'm actually gonna just sew around the edge. So I'm gonna put that right sides together. And you just wanna make sure all of your flaps are down. And then what we're gonna do is trim. Now, of course, you've got a lot of waste on the side. You don't have to do it that way. You can actually do the math and have less waste. I just struggle with the math on it every time. And so I kind of found that doing it this way and then saving these extra pieces for other, piece, other projects is easier for me. So I'm just gonna trim exactly on the line, right sides together. And then I'm gonna pin all the way around the edge and then I'm gonna sew around the edge with about maybe a 3 8 to half inch seam. And then we'll pull the pillow out and we will be done. There are lots of different ways to do pillow backs. You could do a zipper. Um, you can do an envelope back with um, not as much fabric where you just fold the fabric under and trim. There's lots of different ways you can you can do an envelope back. So from here, I just want to pin all the way around so it doesn't come undone. I am gonna do quite a bit of pins so that my layers don't come apart. And then I'm gonna just sew all the way around
Okay, so when you get to the very bottom and you have this very last row that is flipping down and here's your fold, you don't want that to, you don't want that to get sewn in. So you're just gonna have to do slightly smaller right here on this row. You just wanna make sure you don't get your, your ruffle caught in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and start on the side that the ruffle is, and I'm just gonna do a quarter inch seam all the way around, and then we were gonna, we're gonna flip our pillow and see how it looks. So when I was looking at the back, I noticed my flowers didn't go the same way, so I'm actually gonna change that so that they do go the same way and just repin it, because I just noticed that when I flipped that over. I'll just fix that. So now you can see that they go, all the flowers go the same way because that would have been so unattractive. Okay, so I'm gonna find the, the part where the ruffle is, the very last ruffle on your seam and it's right here. And as I'm stitching, I'm gonna kind of fold this under so I don't get that caught in the seam. I'm just gonna kind of fold that under and then I'll have to unflip it when I get to the edges. So I'm gonna do about quarter inch, three eighths, all the way around. So again, just making sure I don't get that little fabric in there. And I'm just gonna use a little guide on my machine. just as I go, just kind of making sure that this doesn't get caught and then we can fix it when we get to the edges. I'm gonna stop about a quarter inch away, whatever seam you're using, stop that much away, and then turn. So I need to go a little bit further. Turn, and then I wanna make sure that ruffle goes down so that it is in my seam correctly this way. So I just need to unfold the ruffle that I had folded in and then start again. And I'm gonna just pivot in that corner. And on this one, you just need to make sure that you cover this seam. So we did about an eighth of an inch there, so we should be good.
and just make sure this ruffle that you folded up goes back down. And now we can look at how our pillow looks. So now you can just unflip your pillow and sometimes you're going to notice that you might have to fix a couple things like I can see right there that I missed a couple things so I'll show you. So if you just look on the edges and make sure that everything is caught, it looks like one little piece I missed. So and I'm going to use, yeah, right here. So this little piece, I need to get that caught back in there. So what I can do is just uh, go back over it real quick. So that just didn't get caught. So I will just pull this back out. Put my finger on it and then I'm just going to sew on it real quick and get it caught in there. There we go. And then I'm just going to use a friction pin and just use it as my point turner just for the corners. You could clip the corners if you want, but this is such a casual pillow and fluffy and it's so big that you're not going to really notice the corners like you would on a six inch pillow so i'm just going to use my finger friction pin it's so cute and then we're just going to put the pillow in so it's a 24 inch pillow we sell them at fat quarter shop and hopefully you have a jelly roll in your stash that you can use you just put your pillow in and it is so fun we want to give a big huge thank you to jara from quilting in the rain definitely visit her blog and you can see how she did her pillow her pillow is um, a different size and i think she laid out her strips a little bit different than we did but huge shout out to her i hope you love her jelly roll pillow and i'll see you next friday <laughs>